Visa and MasterCard, the single most important thing is travel. Um, Pre-pandemic, travel, particularly international travel, was 20, almost 25% of their revenues. That took a hard hit in 2020, of course. And, uh, and so the most important driver over the next few quarters for them is exactly that rate and pace of borders reopening and when people are going to be willing to get back on airplanes and start traveling again. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Lisa Ellis, a senior analyst at Moffett Nathanson, went on CNBC to discuss the effects of traveling for credit services companies such as Visa and MasterCard. With borders opening up, we should see an increase in consumer spending and thus that will give a boost for revenues of such companies. But a huge part of traveling is also business related. We may not see that coming back soon if at all and Lisa has a name that could be hurt more by this than others. This is how they see it. Yeah, so American Express has the most um, you know, linkage to corporate spending uh, you know, pre-pandemic. E even for them, though, it's a relatively you know, smaller, maybe smaller than you'd think in terms of how much uh, is corporate T&E, like, you know, sort of in the 10 ish percent range. We are not and they are not really expecting that spending to come back really ever or certainly not for a number of years. Um, but on the flip side with American Express, they, um, you know, they have. Uh, they are a huge recovery play if you believe in this sort of concept of, you know, the roaring 20s, the sort of luxury goods spending. They're very tied to high end restaurants and luxury goods and travel. And so if you believe that consumers just can't wait to get back out there, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, Amex has that sort of offsetting. But they're the ones, you know, with the biggest exposure to corporate travel spending, which, you know, we and many others are expecting, you know, will likely really never go back to the levels it was pre pandemic. So we have learned that American Express struggles the most out of these three names, but that could also mean the most potential if business travel goes to pre-pandemic levels. Aside from speculation, what we can do today is check into fundamentals. So for the comparison we have Visa, ticker symbol V, MasterCard, MA, and American Express, ticker AXP. In order to make the comparison possible, we will be looking into 8 different factors. Analysts price targets, forward price to earnings ratio, annual revenue growth, price to sales ratio, return on equity, last four quarter earnings results, current ratio and the dividend yield. The best company under each factor will get a point so it is possible to have from 0 to 8 points and in the end the stock with the most points will be considered the winner of this comparison. I hope that the rules are clear so let's begin. The first factor are the analysts price targets. As investors we want to check how far the current share price is away from the average target of analysts. If the current price is under the average target we will consider the stock as undervalued and in the end the company with share price is furthest away from the average analyst target target to the lower side gets a point for this factor. For Visa we have 38 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of 234 to the highs of $297 per share. The average is at $265.09. And the current share price is at $227.30. This means that there is around 16.6% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For MasterCard we have 37 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of $370 to the highs of $460 per share. The average is at $428.11 and the current share price is at $360.58. This means that there is around 18.7% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For American Express there are 25 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of $120 to the highs of $191 per share. The average is at $151.47 and the current share price is at $160.13. This shows that the current price needs to go lower for around 5.4% in order to reach the average target of analysts. Results for the analyst's price targets factor are in the table and with most room for growth, MasterCard gets the first point. Second factor is the forward price to earnings ratio. It is calculated by taking the current share price and dividing it by the estimated future earnings per share. This is the standard price to earnings calculation with the difference that earnings here are predicted by analysts. So in the end, the stock with the lowest forward price to earnings ratio gets a point for this factor. For Visa, the forward price to earnings is at 32.33. Forward price to earnings for MasterCard is at 34.6. And American Express has a forward price to earnings at 17.6. Forward price to earnings ratios are in the table and with the lowest value American Express gets the first point. Third factor is the annual revenue growth. 
as investors will want to find that the revenues of a company are on a steady increase. We will take a look into the numbers of the four most recent years and compare them one by one. If revenue was on the increase from one year to the next, we will consider it as a plus one, and if it was on the decrease, it will be a plus zero. Then we sum the results up to a minimum of zero and a maximum of three, and in the end, the stock with the highest sum here gets a point for this factor. Annual revenues for Visa. And going into 2018, there was an increase to 20.6 billion US dollars. Then into 2019, there was another increase to 22.9 billion. And going into 2020, there was a decrease to 21.8 billion dollars. So with two increases and one decrease in annual revenues, we have a sum of two. Annual revenues for MasterCard. And going into 2018, there was an increase to 14.9 billion US dollars. Then into 2019, we had another increase to 16.8 billion. And going into 2020, there was a decrease to 15.3 billion dollars. So with two increases and one decrease in annual revenues, we again get a sum of two. Revenues for American Express. And going into 2018, there was an increase to 36.9 billion US dollars. Then into 2019, we had another increase to 39.9 billion. And going into 2020, there was a decrease to 31.3 billion dollars. So with two increases and one decrease in revenues, we again get a sum of two. Results for the annual revenue growth factor are in the table. And with equal sums of two, no company is assigned a point for this factor. Four factor is the price to sales ratio. It is calculated by taking the company's market cap and dividing it by the trail total months worth of sales. The formula suggests to be looking for a company with a low market cap and a high result in sales. So in the end, the stock with the lowest price to sales ratio gets a point for this factor. Visa has a price to sales at 23.42. Price to sales for MasterCard is at 23.13 and for American Express the price to sales is at 3.85. Price to sales ratios are in the table and with the lowest value American Express gets another point. Fifth factor is return on equity. It is calculated by taking the net income and dividing it by the shareholders equity. A higher E shows that the company is well managed and that money from investors are efficiently handled. So in the end the company with the highest return on equity percentage gets a point for this factor. For Visa, the return on equity is at 29.5%. Return on equity for MasterCard is at 109.55%. And American Express has a return on equity at 22.01%. Return on equity percentages are in the table, and with the highest value, MasterCard gets another point. Sixth factor is the last four quarter earnings results. When a company reports earnings, they are compared to expectations of analysts. So earnings can either beat expectations, meet them, or miss them. We will consider that beating expectations is a plus one, meeting plus 0 0.5, and missing zero. Then we sum the results up to a minimum of zero and a maximum of four, and in the end, the stock with the highest sum gets a point for this factor. We have quarter earnings for Visa, and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations, Q3 beat, Q4 beat expectations, and Q1 of 2021 beat. So with 4 beats in quarter earnings, we have a sum of 4. Earnings for MasterCard, and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations, Q3 missed, Q4 beat expectations, and Q1 of 2021 beat. So with 3 beats and 1 miss in quarter earnings, we have a sum of 3. Earnings for American Express, and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations, Q3 missed, Q4 beat expectations, and Q1 of 2021 beat. So with 3 beats and 1 miss in quarter earnings, we again have a sum of 3. Results for the last 4 quarter earnings factor are in the table, and with sum of 4, Visa gets the first point. Seventh factor is the current ratio. It is calculated by taking the current assets and dividing them by the current liabilities. As investors want to find that the company is able to cover its debts with assets, but also that they are actually being leveraged. So in the end, the company would highest current ratio between 1.5 and 3 gets a point for this factor. Visa has a current ratio at 2.12. Current ratio for MasterCard is at 1.43. And for American Express the current ratio is at 1.51. Current ratios are in the table, and with the highest value under 3, Visa gets another point. The last factor we have is the dividend yield. It is calculated by taking the annual dividend per share and dividing it by the share price. A high yield may suggest that the company's profits are being shared with shareholders, and that is a great passive income source that we as investors are looking for. So in the end, the company with the highest dividend yield percentage gets a point for this factor. Visa is paying an annual dividend of $1.28 per share, which is a yield of 0.56%. Annual dividend for MasterCard is 
cents per share, which is a yield of 0.49%. And American Express pays an annual dividend of $1.72 per share, which is a yield of 1.07%. Dividend yields are in the table, and with the highest percentage, American Express gets one more point. We can calculate the results, so Visa has 2 points, MasterCard 2 and American Express 3. This means that with a sum of 3, American Express is considered the winner of this comparison. And that was it, if you got value or new ideas then make sure to push that thumbs up, it helps the channel a lot. Do you own or planning to buy any of the tickers mentioned today? Share your views in a comment below. If you are interested to know exactly when I buy or sell in stock then consider the options on Patreon. I have recently did a stock comparison person on large banks including Bank of America, Wells Fargo and Citigroup. And we have 40 weeks worth of investing with the Revolut stock portfolio. If you are interested in any of those then click on the video currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.